Hello everyone, good evening all. We welcome you today on this special program connected with the unsung heroes across the world. Good evening everyone once again. And welcome to this beautiful session as we are connected with a special celebrity and guest who is focused on bringing about a balance, a change in the mindsets of people as to how they could become great leaders, how they could empower others. And it's always really great to get connected with our celebrities to get to know how they have acquired all these wonderful skills who have enabled them to give back so much to the society and the universe. Let's welcome our special celebrity and guest who's joining us all the way from Mambalam, West Mambalam, Chennai, Tamil Nadu, India. He is Mr. S. Sridhar, sir. Hello, sir, and welcome to the session. Good evening, madam. Welcome. Thank you for hosting me. My regards, greetings to our, all our viewers as well. Thank you so much, sir. That's really very nice for being kind and humble and taking out the time to spend your time here on the International Fab Talks only to enlighten others, to empower others and to make you understand that how life has to go, not to be wasted. Every single second is important. And sir, I go ahead now and share your profile in an official way. Yes, sir. Yes. Thank you so much for permitting me to do that. My dear friends, our special celebrity and guest, as I mentioned, Mr. S. Sridhar, he is a leadership coach and he focuses on leading others. He's, the, he's, a, he's a wonderful person who's been training several people. I share his profile in detail, dear friends. And what do I want you all to do? I want you to be like him, like the celebrities who are here, who have been courageous, even if they have faced ups and downs in life, the hurdles that they have faced. It did not let them you know, sit back and relax it, or, you know, sit back and cry over things. He just, like our guest or like all the guests that are here, they have always focused on improvement and upgrading skills. Now, let's go ahead and share the profile of our celebrity, uh, Mr. Sridhar. He's an assertive communicator. So when you want to be a great, important person, you have to be a good communicator. So he is a great communicator, a professional speaker and a proficient behavioral skills trainer. Sir has conducted at least 3,000 plus hours of sessions, not one or two or 20 or you know, 3,000 plus hours of training sessions he has been contributing and over 25,000 participants have participated in all the training programs and have benefited not from one or two organizations, from 100 plus organizations across the world. Sir is also a passionate life coach and an instructional designer. Sir loves to have this beautiful aspect or you know this beautiful uh, courage within him of indomitable persuasive nature he believes in that and this appeals to all the stakeholders the team members and the management and he conducts all the programs very successfully enables others also to participate in such programs uh, and give their 100 percent you know and um, it's all based on like successful execution of all the projects and all, whatever you take up. Sir says, I am there with my 100%. I want you participants also to give you 100%. And he makes you do that. He is a seasoned sales and marketing professional with a rich, rich experience of 40 plus years. Four decades. Imagine four decades. Sir has four decades of a great experience in the pharma industry, working in Abbott Healthcare Private Limited. Sir was involved in sales, marketing, and participated in labor management negotiations. That's really beautiful. Uh, labor management negotiations, that's really very close to my heart and we'd love to know more about it uh, In as we go proceed with the interview. Uh, this experience of you know being connected with the labor management negotiations, et cetera, this experience has given Sir an insight. Insight into what? Insight into the people's mind, into what that thought process is, to understand the psychology behind how people think. And why do people think in a similar way or maybe in a different way? So this beautiful experience has enabled Sir to become a strong person to understand how the other person thinks or behaves in a certain situation. Sir has completed his graduation in mathematics. He's also a postgraduate diploma holder in business management, persuasive skills. He's been certified in train the trainer course from the Indian Academy of Training and Development strategic management program from IIM Rotak. And Sir is a virtuous self-believer. You believe in yourself. He's a self-believer and this quality ensures that his training sessions and workshops are really super cool, dynamic, energetic, and of course have the positive vibes 
and result oriented and above all value for money. This is what we all look value for money. And so sir says, yes, if they are in my session, in my workshop or under me getting trained, they will definitely have you know, all the benefits and it will be value for money. In-depth knowledge on training need analysis ensures all trainings and adds value to the business growth of participants or either organizations. There are both individual sessions as well as organizational sessions that so takes up. Certifications, specific training related skills, like focusing on the expertise uh, in leadership training, train the trainer concepts, uh, resonance behavior modeling, etc. Sir has also you know, focused on effective and assertive communication, creativity, change management, adaptability, which is very important and motivational your unique selling product, you know, that is or the USP, they say. Sir is also an excellent storyteller and a bi-directional communicator. That's wonderful. And conducting seminars, workshops, are, which are very interactive. It's not one way. It's always two ways. It should be interactive to, you know, bring about that positive energy. Make your participants feel good. Make them take parts. Sir does that. And hence, it is very interesting and exceedingly useful to all the participants because it is a two-way method. It is interactive. And then Sir also focuses on various aspects of building, you know, the soft skills or the people skills in various individuals and organizations when they call them or when they call Sir for, you know, his expertise and for his time and trainings. The recent training session, Sir conducted uh, these trainings at FMCG, BFSI, food processing industries, real estate industries, and pharmaceuticals. To add to that, the trainees includes MNCs, the people who work in the MNCs, and Indian companies like Kellogg's, LifeScan, Bajaj Finance Limited, uh, Indus in Bank, Access Bank, Kotak Mahindra Bank, Icarus, Xeom, Xeom uh, Therapeutics, if I get that right, Vasu Pharma, Police Academy, etc. Finally, Sir is a firm believer that knowledge is empowerment and empowerment is the game changer. I agree totally with our guest that empowerment is the game changer. And here, we are going to be empowered today with the speciality of our celebrity and guest. His expertise and knowledge will be shared now. So, hats off to you for your brilliant profile and thank you so much for being here with us. I must thank you for that. Uh, excellent introduction you have provided. Thank you for that. I hope I live up to that. Let's Thank see. you, sir. Thank you very much. Yes. You're very humble. Dear sir, as I've shared your profile, and we know that you have a rich and a vast background of 40 plus years of wonderful experience as a professional. We'd yes. like to know about actually who is the real Sridhar. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, as I said, as you rightly said, I've been a sales professional throughout. <clears throat> The marketing part, I was more in the execution area. I was not part of marketing per se. But whatever the marketing strategy are, are given to us, we'll go and execute it in the field. That was my job as a medical representative. Uh, I It was a long career, close to some 35, 36 years. So the job was a medical representative, where you go and meet the doctor, represent your company, promote the products. Request him to do prescriptions. It was interesting, hugely learning, hugely challenging as well, given the kind of competition. And of course, the industry has also evolved over the period of 30 by 40 years. We have also evolved. So these points are in the evolution. I'll probably interact, you know, I'll cite more as we progress. So this is my brief background. Then, then it struck me that once I retired, that first innings, I would call. So I chose the second innings. I wanted to be a trainer and coach. Because some of my well wishes seniors say in my own company, they said, see, the, the, you need somebody to look at your strength and then that's what we call 360 degree feedback. You need somebody, seniors and peers around you to look at, tell you what are you saying. Even though you would know your strength, it's always better to get it validated. So my seniors, my well wishers said, see, there, why can't you take a training and coach? Then I started into this. That's why you would see that there is a certification course, a four months course from one of the organizations. Train the training. And anyway, uh, you said sales and marketing. The strategic management, I'm interested. 
So I did a short online course from IIM Rotec on strategic management. That helps me to know and learn how the companies are being run. I was, for 35 years and all, I was on the other end of the spectrum. I was only in execution. But this foray helped me to learn how, you know, the kind of strategic planning, strategic execution, SWOT analysis, blah, 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 all those things, uh, situation and all those things. So that helped me to understand that. So being a trainer, that helps me as well. Of course, I'm a sales trainer, but I'm a leadership trainer as well. These are the two verticals I'm there. I'm only reminded of uh, Peter Drucker, the great management thinker, management guru, who said that when a young research scholar was approaching him for his interview, and he was obviously uh, admiring him in taking inspiration and looking at, so what should I do? Peter Drucker advised him, young boy, I wish you all the best. You'll be successful. Definitely you'll become successful. All of us want to be successful. You also will become successful. Don't worry. But as a parting word, you know, this boy was like, sir, what do you want me to do? You have given me your time so that I could come and interview you. For that, I should give back something to you. What should I do? Tell him. I'm obliged. He says, young man, you'll become successful. Don't worry. But be useful, he said. Useful to whom? To the society. So my success has no meaning if I don't contribute to the society. It can be in whatever way. So I am inspired by that actually. There are lakhs of people who are inspired by Peter Drucker. I am of course a tiny guy, one of them. But so this is uh, what has made me to get into that. Of course, what I am doing, I do reasonably well commercial. There is a result of what I am doing. But the purpose, can you intervene? Can you make a small difference in the people whom we come across? Of course, for that you need to keep learning. We That's what we said, no? Knowledge is the you know, empowerment. Knowledge sharing is empowerment. But empowerment is a game changer. So how do you share knowledge? You should have acquired knowledge then. You acquire knowledge from your own experience, others' experience, and of course, uh, reading from books, from very popular authors, gurus, and others. So this is a broad inspiration why I am doing what I am doing. Yeah. Excellent, sir. That's really very nice for sharing all of that. That's really nice. You've shared your beautiful journey. Now, what we are interested in, you taking this beautiful path of leadership and enabling people to focus on this beautiful term, leadership. So we'd like you to share your expertise with regard to leadership, sir. More than my expertise, my understanding of leadership, I'll put sure. it that way. Yes. Sir. Okay, my experience, my expertise is <laughs> pretty limited. I'm not humble here. I'm really honest. But my understanding, when you observe people, when you read things. So there are that can be any number of uh, definitions of leadership. But there are a few which are really worth recalling. John C. Maxwell, the leadership guru, he says in his book, you know, this is five levels of leadership. He says, five levels is, uh, of course, there are many things. Level one, position, permission, production, people development, and pinnacle. Finally, five levels of leadership. He says, leadership simply is it's one life influencing another life. As simple as that. That's what leadership is all about. You have an opportunity to influence another person's life. For that, you don't have to have a title or label. It's not that I'm a leader of some 10 people, 50 people following. I'm a manager of 30 people. No, not necessary. You could be the individual contributor. The classic case we say, you may be the individual contributor. Nobody is reporting to me. Still, I can be a leader. How? The kind of values, the kind of ethics, the kind of... How can I influence people? Nobody is reporting to me, all right? But there are people, peers, left, right. I can influence them. And to my immediate boss, whom I am in contact with, again, I can influence him. So that's what his leadership is all about, influence. Or other way it is put it as, if you can make people to dream more, to learn more, to work more, and to achieve more, you are a leader. That happens in our family life, you know. 
the father trying to inspire the child. The elder sister tries to inspire her younger brother. Can you inspire people? Can you influence them? So that's what is all about um, leadership. All of us are leaders in our own ways, actually. All of us are leaders in our own ways. Yes, excellent. So that's really nice. Like all of us are leaders in our own way. But sir, we do require a bit of deeper understanding with regard to why do we have to feel that we need to be leaders? Because many of us like to be led. There are very few leaders who rise up and stand. Yes, I can lead the team or I can do this. We They need that push up or they need that training or they need those extra skills. So I would like to know what is the purpose behind being a great leader? I take you to our own family situation. It could be your family, my family, anybody's family. Sometimes it's not that always the father leads the family. At times, I mean, I'm not appearing anything. Sometimes the mother takes equal responsibility. I'm not talking of present generation mother, mind you. I'm talking of the my mothers like that. They take responsibility. They lead people. They lead the, especially during marriages and other things, you will say, well, the father will provide the financial and all other aspects. The mother takes care of the execution part of it. To execute also, you need leadership mind. In professional terms, not only for strategizing, you require leadership. The execution also, so mother takes care of that. In some families, I know, yeah, I'll tell you one example. My mother's cousin sister, of course, my mother is, a man. my parents are with me. She's in the next room. She's 83 years old. Her cousin, she's fit. My, both my parents are fit. I'm literally moving up, doing it. My mother's cousin sister, who is again 83, 84 years old, some 60 years back, she was separated. Mind you, 60 years back. Had to, with a one year old child. Those days, people going to work was unheard of. I'm talking of 60 years back. Still, she brought up the courage. Those days, the typewriting short term was very famous. You might know. Or <laughs> see here, your father would know, not you. Your father would know. Typewriting short term, secretary. She learned that and started and got a job in government. And so 20 years back, she is retired. And she is getting some good pension. She brought her son up, who became an IIT graduate and who recently retired last year. Is it not a leadership quality? In your introduction, you said, no, there are many unsung heroes. These are all celebrated heroes. All these people are celebrated heroes. Or our sportspersons, cinema, business, politics, celebrated heroes, rightly so. They all deserve to be celebrated. But as you rightly said in the introduction, many unsung heroes, and heroines, if you want to put that, I'll put it that. Heroes means I put it in a gender neutral. In our own family, we see them. It could be your mother's cousin or your own elder brother or my own father. Tirelessly, five children, four children, tirelessly working. They are all leadership qualities only. We can draw inspiration from them. We do draw, if only we can. But only thing is, you can't show them as an example in, say, in this kind of interview. Because you don't know them. You get my point. That is why people like us, we draw the names, bigger names, celebrities like Sachin Tandolkar, Virakur. They are all leaders, mind you. We admire them. But it is easy to relate for the audience when he says some popular figures. But let me assure you, in all our family, not only the lady is not just in my family. If you look back, there could be one or two people in your own family. Is it not? In every family, there will be one or two, three people who fight the odds. You said no, fighting the odds. Who fight the odds and then come up. So, now we understand leadership is needed. It's not that leadership is needed only in professional areas. As I said, we have three in phases, you know, in life. Personal life, social life, and professional life. So, in my personal life also, I require the leadership. I need to lead myself first. If I don't do that, which means I'm taking a little casually, what is leadership you are ultimately? I am deciding something. I would like to go towards that. That's what is leadership. If I don't do that, what happens? Somebody else will defy, decide on my behalf. And I am just following them. I mean, you can follow, I won't deny it. 
but which means either you don't have dreams or you are allowing your dreams to be killed because you are not being assertive enough. So all of us are can be leaders. Earlier in 17th century, 18th century, leadership was thought to be born leaders because it was monarchy. King, son, king, son, king, son, monarchy. So leader, 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 leader. So from 19th century onwards, once the democracy came up throughout the world, then besides politics, there were industries, business, sports, so many things came. Then we saw the leadership truly coming. Leadership in business, leadership in politics, leadership in sports. Then we, people started researching. Oh, earlier they thought leaders were born. Here is it today not necessary. I mean, some might have the qualities as a leader in birth itself. But other 99% can always acquire those leadership qualities. And that's what we have witnessed. Very many people across the spectrum, across the society, across the state, you get leaders from, not necessarily from elite. So it all depends upon what I want. Can I focus? If you focus and work hard, naturally you will achieve it. So this is our understanding. Yes, excellent, sir. That's really nice. As you mentioned that it's not only the elite, uh, you know, celebrated heroes. There are several unsung heroes who are there across the world and they would really, you know, sh they are shining in their own space and, and spreading the light across the world. That's really nice. And you could say it starts from our own family. As you said, you gave an example, a beautiful example. It could be our own family members too, our neighbors. It could be people who we come across in our everyday lives too. Yes, sir. Dear sir, we'd like to know, like, how does one develop the leadership skills? Like, if at all, there's a person who has been broken down completely, depressed and, and sad and has no path to go, but then he wants to become a leader. So what are your tips or what is your strategy for them to with regard to self-development on the path of leadership? Good question. Very young. You're, you're on the dot. There should be purpose. All of us should have a purpose. Robin Sharma says, the famous book, you know, Monk who sold a Ferrari, five empty. Robin Sharma, he says, the purpose of life is life of purpose. The purpose of life is life of purpose. So all of us should have a purpose. As I said in the beginning, why I am doing what I am doing? Then what I want to become, how I am going to become, all those questions. Why? Why I am doing what I am doing? That is really, really important. In this, I mean, the context in which we are having this discussion, we say the situation is VUCA. VUCA is a V-U-C-A, it's an acronym, VUCA. The situation is volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. There is a VUCA situation, be it in professional front, or even in family front as well. Today, you know, the kind of relationship, the pressures, the stress, it's happening within the family also and beyond in society. We are part of the society. So it is going to have an impact on my family. So broadly, we can say, and we'll have a discussion primarily into leadership and more to into industry, professional area. As in when I come to my personal situation, I'll draw back, come back here, but generally, so in professionally, if you look at this VUCA, the situation is volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. How are you going to navigate that? Troubled waters. Say, I, I mean, you right to introduce me some 40 years I'm there. The things, the way my profession was in the 80s, it was not in 90s. The way it was in 90s, it was not in 2000s. The way it was in 2000, it was not in 2019. COVID came. So even earlier, turbulent years, but in COVID onwards, then we may have to year after think before COVID and after COVID only. Even our own personal lives, we'll have to look at it that way. Before COVID and after COVID. Because COVID, nobody can, I mean, say five years back, if you have said, no trains will run in this country. Would you believe it? Have you, would you, whether you would have believed it? No buses will run. Have you, would have believed it? Kind of a lockdown. 
we have heard lockouts in factories, but the entire country is locked down. So that was the kind of, it's a kind of a once in century situation. So afterwards, things have totally changed. Let me tell you, this VUCA has been there all along. The problem was always there, the situation. But this COVID has, in fact, only accentuated the situation. VUCA. Volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. So people are thinking what, how to go about it. Then there has to be a solution. No point in focusing on the problem. We should be part of the solution. So the solution is VUCA Prime. <clears throat> if VUCA is a problem, Uka Prime can be the solution. So what is Uka Prime? Vision, understanding, clarity, and agility. If Uka is a problem, Uka Prime is a solution. So as I said, um, I do, I mean, I am empaneled with uh, a few vendors. Through them only, I conduct programs. But I do conduct some individual programs also. So for my individual programs, this Uka, how to overcome Uka is my signature program. So I tell about the problem. I tell the solution also, hook up and, and what it contains, as you rightly say, since you said, you know, the leadership, what can. A survey was taken one year back where some 150 managers across the globe, they were asked, what are the qualities you are expecting from people when you recruit people? It could be, you know, frontline manager, second line manager, or even entry level. They were asked to list out 10 skills. The top five skills were creative thinking, collaboration, adaptability, persuasiveness, emotional intelligence. These were the top five skills listed out by some 150 managers. So, which means the companies are expecting these five skills to be there when they want people and they want to promote people inside or from lateral entry. So, I took that. Then, I'm a huge fan of Stephen Covey. This is a book called Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Lacks and lacks of people have been benefited by that across the globe. Business people, industrialists, politicians, students, family people, husband and wives. Many businesses were saved from bankruptcy. Many sports person like say Michael Phelps was a famous swimmer. He says, I learned goal setting from this book from Stephen. Many families, husband and wife, family problems. Many families were saved from divorce. So once again, we are coming back to the point. All these things are not confined to your profession area alone. These leadership qualities is, are useful at your family level as well. That's what this means. So to give to good to him, uh, we have a, in our community, we have a WhatsApp group giving to him seven habits self-development, where across some 150, 200 people are there across the country who are there and we have given a platform so that we people can learn leadership. It's more of a learning and development, exclusively nothing else. So what I'm trying to say is, so these five skills and seven habits, I put it as a kind of a package and I take it to people. Incidentally, the seven habits are, the book says, we can follow it. Be proactive. Begin with the end in mind. Put first things first. Think win-win. Seek first to understand, then to be understood. Synergize and sharpen the song. So these are all the seven habits. First three habits is about me, how I should become. Next three habits, once I get into the outside space, so this is all about from dependent, I become in independent. From independent, I become, there is an interdependent society. How we are going to move it? So this is the seven habits. So these five skills and seven habits, I put it as a capsule, as a module and try to speak. You know, in my personal capacity, whenever I do training to corporate managers, besides that, there are other leadership points and other things. But to me, like our, if you are, if you are learning Carnatic music, Sabdaswara, Sarigama Padani, na. Similarly, the seven habits are the foundation above which you can learn anything. If you don't learn these seven habits, learning all those skills could be disoriented and disjointed. I would say. So this is uh, what it is. So anybody can learn.
Well, how we practice, that's what matters. Yeah. Yes, that's really nice for sharing. So could you just elaborate on this term, synergistic or synergy? As to synergize. Yes. Synergize. synergize. Habit number six. Habit number six. Can you go from habit number one? Sure, if sir. If you don't mind. Yes, please. Be proactive. Be proactive. Because I don't want to say you go to six. Because unless you do the five, six, uh, one will not be able to understand. So I'll take a couple of minutes. First is be proactive. Means what? There are many things happening in my life from morning to evening. Certain things I can control. Certain things I cannot control. Suppose it's raining. Can I control? No. So that is circle of concern. I can't do anything. But what can you do? Can you take umbrella? Can you take a raincoat? That is circle of influence. I can influence. So circle of concern. Circle of influence. So proactive is what you can do, you do. Don't wait for the outside atmosphere to become favorable. Then I will start acting. That doesn't matter. Be proactive. Be proactive. Number one. Begin with end in mind. That's what another way called goal setting. Be clear what is your destination. Begin with end in mind. Always be clear. And there will be many choices. But each choice has a consequence. Say, suppose uh, you are at you are based at Hyderabad, is it? In Hyderabad railway station, there are, say, three platforms, three trains are there. One train is going to Delhi, another train is going to Kolkata, another train is going to Chennai. If you want to go to Kolkata, you should go to the platform and board the train which goes to Kolkata. To make the choice, it is in your hands. Take the correct train, correct train. Having taken the, made the choice, afterwards it's autopilot. The train will go only to Kolkata. There is a consequence. You can't say, I want, I want to go to Chennai. So for every choice, making it is your own discretion. But every choice has a consequence that you can't control. So begin with the end in mind. Be clear where you want to go. Then you decide how you are going to go. Because he says everything is done twice. First mentally, then only physically. So be clear, mental. Just like the way you build a house, you know? how do you do? Say you don't go build the two bedroom all kitchen, blah, blah. No, you have a blueprint, yes or no? I say I have one bedroom like this, another bedroom like that, 10 by 10 bedroom, 15 by 12, all like that. So you have a blueprint. Can you go on, build it. So similar. So that is habit number two. Be proactive, begin with tending it. Put first things first. This is brilliant. There are many things you'll have to do right from morning to evening. Be clear. What are the things which matter? All the successful people, invariably, they know what they want to do first. So prioritize. Prioritize your schedule. Okay. Based on its importance. So that is habit number three. Put first things first. This is within you. I can do all the three. I can be proactive. Okay. That is about me. Begin with end in mind. Put first things first. These three are about me. So from dependent person, I am becoming an independent person. But it doesn't end there. I have to interact with the society. So I go. I meet people, say with you. We have a professional relationship. Think win-win. You should also win, I should also win. Habit number four. Think win. Suppose I say I want to, I wanted to lose, I want to win. It cannot sustain. You'll wait for an opportunity. Then you'll hit it. Or I give up to you easily because you are my boss. I give up to you. So you win and I lose. Then again, I'm waiting for an opportunity. So it doesn't help. So think when. For that, we should have courage and consideration. I should have the courage to say whatever I want to say. And I should be considerate enough. I should be considerate enough for this time. So habit number four, think when. when. The fifth one, hugely, hugely. See, for every habit, I say hugely important. But all are like that. The fifth one, Seek first to understand, then to be understood. Means what? Listen to people. Listen, listen, listen. Wherever you go, my dear friend, 
listening. See, for all, for us coaches, we are taught to listen and question. Listening, questioning. Listening, that's what we It applies to all of us. Listen, listen, listen. What the other person is saying. Of course, there are various styles of listening. Active listening, total listening, complete listening. Because many of us, we listen not to listen. We listen to reply. Yeah. Say, suppose you are talking two, three lines. I hear the first line and starting over what she is telling, what is it? By then you are in the second, third, fourth line. I have not listened at all. Because I was engrossed with trying to reply to the first. Should not listen, listen, listen. Unfortunately, listening in communication, they say LS or W. Listening, speaking, reading, and writing. To speak, you are taught by your parents in the school. To read, you are taught in the school. To write, you are taught. Unfortunately, to listen, there is no structured teaching of listening. Maybe that is one of the reasons why. You can even tell me, I'm not a great listener as I am a whatever little speaker. I'm not a big listener the way I am a good writer. Listening. Maybe we need to cultivate that. Then, listen to understand. Seek to understand. Then to be understood. Then I tell about myself. You can understand. So happy to meet you. Sixth, the one which you asked me, synergize, my dear friend. I mean, you had a reason why you brought this first. Synergy. Extremely important. Working together as a group. Synergy. That uh, normally what arithmetically 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. Synergy is 1 plus 1 could be 11, 1, 12, 2, 11, like that. For that, there should be trust and cooperation. For that happening, I mean, our relationship, if there has to be a synergy, it is a real way. Any relationship, if there is synergy, trust and cooperation. I should trust you. Then only you will cooperate. I should cooperate with you. Then only you will trust me. If it doesn't happen, then one person will not be two. If I don't trust you, I'm not giving my best. If you don't cooperate with me, you're not giving your best. Then in that case, your normal arithmetic also will not happen. One plus one will not become two. I mean, I don't want to talk politics here, but you can imagine some alliance which are not, uh, which cannot be cohesive. It will not get the results. You can be put. So synergize. For that, cooperation and trust is important. That is habit number six, which you asked. It is very, very important in team building, which we focus on that. Habit number seven is sharpen the saw. Practice all the six habits. There is a very famous story. You told me I'm a good storyteller. I'm not a good storyteller, but I'll tell you a story anyway. You're a woodcutter in a organization. He has been there for 10, 15 years. He was not getting any increment, forget other bonus and promotion, increment event. He asked his boss, no, 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 you're not producing enough. Then another young man joins. Within three months, he was able to get more promotion and increments, bonuses, other things. So this guy, senior person, mind you, senior person, he goes to his boss and says, sir, I've been here for 12, 15, 20 years. You never gave me an increment. The boss says, sir, I already, boy, I already told you, my dear friend, your product has not improved. So you give the other boy who came just, you know, one year back. His productivity is better, yeah. So, so this person who is senior to the young boy, you see here, he's a growth-oriented individual. He doesn't have any ego. He wants to grow. He wants to learn from people. He goes to the younger person and says, Junior man, hey, come on here. I've been here for 20 years, but I never got any. I mean, my boss says my productivity is not there. How are you able to do it here? Your productivity seems to be better. For that, the guy asks, sir, since when you sharpened your axe? Hey, I have no time here to sharpen my axe. It was some three months back or something. Sir, then how can you expect it to break the tree, sir, when the axe is not sharp enough? I sharpen my axe every two days, sir. So you are having the 
hitting daily basis, chopping, chopping, chopping. But if your tool is not sharp enough, you will not get the results. So all the six habits, sharpen the saw, practice on daily basis, practice on daily basis. So this is sharpening the saw. So this is what the seven habits are about. I mean, normally we take a one day class on this because every habit will give activity, exercises, link it with your day-to-day -day work and bring in activity things. So I just try to tell in five, 10 minutes. So this is really a, had a huge influence on me, this book, which has been a game changer, life changer for me actually. So that's why I thought that I shall speak about this book. This is a small payback I can give to that author. This is my way of telling him thank you. Yes, excellent. So you have explained it so well and you have given us deep information about how things work out when you train somebody and what are the requirements for this beautiful training session. And you focused on VUCA. That's very nice. You've also focused on VUCA Prime and these beautiful five habits and like all the seven. Uh, this month. That's really very, very nice. Uh, it really focuses on how one should really build themselves very well. And you explain each of them so very well, sir. Sir, I'd like to know, like, when you are training the participants, how do you, you always say it's interactive. As you said, there's activity and all of that. So when the training session goes on, the you know, when the training session goes on, are, I want to know, do participants stand up and come out and take your space for about a minute or two maybe and act as a leader or as a trainer. Has that happened? We encourage people. We encourage people. Uh, so I'll put it this way. Say uh, 2025 is the normal participants. And as you'd always have it, so 20-30% of the people who are really, really, really interact. It happens everywhere. Another 50, 60 percent of the people are normal. Another 10, 12 are slightly. Yeah. So our job would be when we train people, you encourage these 30 people, 30 percent of the people. Say 30 percent of 25 is for six, seven people. Encourage them. They are, in fact, interacting with you. As you said, no. In my programs, I give 100 percent. I also tell them, beginning itself, I come prepared reasonably. I'll give a best 100 percent. But I want to give 120-130%. That extra 20-30% can come from your interaction. Beyond my brief, I would go. When you ask some questions, you can disagree. You can agree. Then it becomes a kind of a discussion. So these six, seven, eight people will help us to do that. And as you said, you know, see, I told you, you know, all our leaders here. Yeah. See, it's not even in school or colleges, we are taught now to treat them as individuals. In school, you don't treat them as adults. But in college, they are adults. So there is something called adult learning principle. They come with a big experience when you are addressing corporate managers who are there for 20 years, 15 years, 25 years. They are there successful people here. Yeah. They are already experienced. But of course, still they are coming to learn a few things from you. See, you should appreciate their humility. They are they are in their own right, they are experts. Still, see their growth orientation. I always say this. There are three pairs of things we should all have here. Positive attitude and growth orientation. We should always be like that. Positive attitude and growth orientation. I would like to grow. Right? Positive attitude, growth orientation. <clears throat> Hunger and fire in the belly to succeed. And humility and empathy. Humility. That's what I say. You know, when people come, they are humble enough. They say, okay, sir, I would like to learn. They have no ego. What I do is, here, I always put Virat Kohli. I'm sure all of us know Virat Kohli. Your picture, talking to his batting coach, Vikram Rathor. Vikram Rathor, not many people would know. He's a batting coach of India today. The head coach is Rahul Dravid. Not many people know Virat, uh, Vikram Rathor. So I put that picture and say, ask people, interact, you know, what do you think? People say they are discussing strategies, tactics, last match, blah, blah. All all right, because nobody can guess, because they are discussing, or how even my guess cannot be right. But we are trying to interpret, because your picture speaks more than 1,000 words. So we are trying to get those 1,000 words, actually. 
So, so what is my take finally? Not necessarily the right take or the best thing, but my take also is, I say, I look at Virat Kohli and Vikram Rato. Virat Kohli, the world-class performer, premier batsman across the format, 2020, 50, 50, five days, number one batsman easily, arguably. But still, he's talking to your batting coach. Why? Because he wants to grow still further. You get me? He wants to grow further. So that hunger and fire and the belief is there. Positive attitude is there. Growth orientation is there. Humility is there. I'll tell you why humility is where it is. Next, next line. I'll tell you. So hunger and fire in his belly. The bowlers are there. Who are these competitors? They want to take his wicket. But here he wants to outwit the bowler. So what is happening? Constantly I should practice. Constantly. And last match I made a mistake. Let somebody point out. Here in this case Vikram Rathur. I'll correct my mistake. You get me point. So what is happening? What we are, This is what we call infinite mindset. In management terms, there is a finite mindset, infinite mindset. Finite mindset is there is a game, there are rules, there are players, there is a target and you win the competitor. Finite mindset. Infinite mindset, no rules, no game, no competitor, no target. Keep practicing, keep practicing, keep practicing on daily basis. When you practice that, your competitor is not outside. Say, I'm Sridhar. Yesterday's Sridhar is competitor to today's Sridhar. Can I be better than what I was yesterday? Can I excel myself? We don't go for perfection. Because perfection, you know, it's a subjective term. What is perfect for me may not be perfect for you. For me, for you, whatever. Or what is perfect today may not be perfect tomorrow. So don't go for perfection. Go for excellence. Excel. Be better than what we are yesterday. That's what Kaizen says, you know, Japanese term Kaizen. What it says, continuous improvement. Consistent improvement. Very famous book, Atomic Habits, by James Clear. He says, make 1% improvement on daily basis. At the end of 365 days, one year, you'll be 38 times better than what you are today. At the end of one year, 1% improvement. So that's what people like Virat Kohli or anybody would do. Or a musician. Musician. Whoever is a popular musician. Favorite musician. They practice daily. In between, there will be performances. They go on, perform and come out. They do well. Naturally, why not? Because they are practicing daily. So practice, practice, practice. So that's what I say this, you know. Virat Kohli Virat. That is one thing. He wants to excel. Second point is, he has no ego to learn. The person who is supposed to be his batting coach, Vikram Rathu, hardly played international cricket. Virat Kohli has scored 50 centuries in one-day matches. This gentleman, Vikram Rathor, hardly played. But Virat Kohli is not uh, having any ego. He doesn't say, no, no, no. Person who has scored better than me, they can only come and teach me. No. He doesn't say that. He is willing to learn. As If, if somebody is, knows the job, knows the game, who can observe and tell me what I'm, where I'm wrong, I'm prepared to correct he doesn't have an ego. See, had he wanted, you could have said, no, okay, BCC, the cricket board appointed that coach, thrusted upon him. Still, he can say, no, Baba, why do you come and coach me? Huh? There are younger players, the Shubman Gill, Jay Sliwal, so many younger boys. Go and teach them here. Why do you want to teach me? What I am going? He doesn't have that ego. Why? Because he has the hunger and fire in the belly. Because he is a growth oriented person. Because he has got the positive attitude. So, humility in him. So these are all the things which we are looking at. So this is what I show generally this Virat Kohli and Vikram Rathur. And I throw the program, I come back to, I tell some story earlier, I show some picture. Throughout the program, I should be able to draw upon from there. See, I told you, you know, that like that. Or I'll tell some uh, newer stories or newer pictures. Like that. So that's easy to relate. Like that. That's it. Yeah. 
So, excellent, sir. It was really very interesting to listen to you with regard to what you were sharing just now. And the main focus was no ego if you want to have a growth mindset. You know, if the moment you have ego, you stop growing. That's very nice. You've given a wonderful example of Virat Kohli and his coach, that is Vikram. Uh, Vikram Rathod. Vikram, Vikram Rathod. That's yeah. really nice. And you said fire in the belly, hunger in the belly enables you to go further ahead. Apart from that, you also focused on being humble and empathetic too. Empathetic. That's really very nice. A very, very empowering session, which you shared with us. That's really so nice. So, now I'd like to ask you something about, apart from the professional space, we'll come back to the professional space. We'll give it a, before we go into the uh, the next part, let us be in the professional space for just a few minutes. Like, What are the challenges you face as a trainer come coach and leader leadership skill trainer like what are the challenges the first challenge what you face and how you overcome that challenge i mean uh, i'm thankful for raising this question i told you i retired as a medical representative which is at the entry level i started my journey 40 years back as a medical representative and retired as a medical representative I did not take up any promotion. The reason was, again, purpose. I told you know why I'm doing what I'm doing. Because people like us, some of us, you know, really part of a career, desired to spend a little bit more time on some social areas. So the medical reps, our own community, we thought that we should work for the upliftment of all of us. There is a selfish uh, interest in me, but there is a common interest also. For that, so we are all part of trade union. But the trade union helped me a lot. That's why in your introduction you said no. I was involved in labor management negotiations with my company and my other, with other companies also because I was in uh, our industry based organization also. So that time that helped me to learn about my own friends, the so called my own comrades. What are their problems? What they are facing? And how we can represent them? And you listen to the management also, their views as well. So that helps you to understand this. Unfortunately, this platform gave me an opportunity to sharpen my skills as a communicator. Whatever I'm doing today, I work there. Some leadership qualities, it helped me. Still, Having finished as a medical representative, the ideal job would have been if I wanted to just to extend that same career of selling career, which is good, mind you, exciting, good and rewarding. I could have extended. But as I said, uh, can I make influence? Can I inspire people? This is a book called Start It Why. Very popular author, very popular author, very popular author, Simon Sinek. You could see a lot of YouTube. So. Why do we do what do we do? I told you in the beginning. Why do we do what? The purpose. He said, no, why? So, I was inspired by that. So, can I go beyond my day-to-day -day selling? And here also, I'm earning well. In fact, I'm earning better than I was earning earlier. That's not that. Of course, that is important. Commercial. But you have an opportunity to influence people. But that wasn't going to be easy. Because I was always seen as a kind of a medical representative, salesperson. Can you become a trainer? Because you are changing two things, mind you. One, functions. Selling was a function. I was in function, sales function. Now I am coming to training function. Coaching, training and coaching. Second, I was in pharma industry. Then I took a conscious decision that I shall go beyond pharma industry. Very, you have read, you know, I am into automobile coaching, training, FMCG. NBFC, non-banking finance, and blah, blah, everywhere. So leadership is generic, yeah. Leadership is generic. Everywhere people require leaders. So, but obviously things are not going to be easy, which means I was starting from the scratch, actually. At one sense, it was not starting from the scratch because I had some 35 years of life experience. Life teaches you something. That is it. Of course, you need to have the structured learning which I underwent a couple of courses that helped me to learn. And of course, I'm into that. And obviously, challenges are there. 
challenges are there that brings out the best in you so but let me tell you since you open the point one basic mantra unlearn learn and relearn i told you i'm there for 30 30 years but there are certain things which were useful yesterday are not useful today so you need to unlearn those things you can't fight today's battle with yesterday's weapons so unlearn so learn newer things i'll give you an example say covid struck then we can't go out you can't keep quiet also so people are having online classes including schools colleges online classes so if for us also online trainings were there so some of us decided to learn all these laptop blah blah all those things online coaching how it made to interesting there are some games in online which you should activities not games necessarily activities you should learn some of my colleagues they said see they know yeah it's difficult i mean learning a new things people always change you know you said change management no change initially it meets resistance some of my friends said no see that's not for you they gave some valid reasons that is see you take class for 25 30 people corporate managers 25 of them close their camera even in physical classes also i said only seven or eight are interactive another 10 or normal another five or don't open at all in online classes what happens they don't even open the camera neither they interact with you it's a challenge for you to make it interesting so you need to learn many things then so some of my friends said no no i are like we said no no it is not we should so what is happening now things have gone you coming back to normal so slowly now we are in circulation people who were not willing to adapt them just i told you you know the five skills we are thinking collaboration adaptability persuasion is emotional adaptability that adaptability some of my friends did not want to do they were in comfort zone comfort zone you can't afford to be in comfort zone so comfort zone learning zone fear zone and growth zone rather fear zone comes second comfort zone fear zone learning zone and growth zone it is like this uh, the child is in the mother's womb uterus for 8 months 9 months it is in comfort zone okay it is in comfort zone but it is not meant for that to remain there after 9 months it should come out so it comes out once it comes out either through whatever normal delivery or cesarean once it comes out what happens it starts crying because it was in a comfortable area now it suddenly comes to the world suddenly tube lights and other things it is not able to breathe properly all those so fear zone then slowly it starts learning rolls over crawls starts walking see like that rolls over learning so and of course slowly or good for us what always happens initially from comfort zone to come out of that there will be fear of uncertainty fear of failure but that should not be allowed to overcome us learn 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 do it fail learn, do it fail there's nothing called failure in broader sense either i succeed or i learn there's nothing called strictly failure or something so comfort zone fear zone learning zone and growth zone so this is how so the people who are not willing to do that they are left behind people who are prepared to experiment and explore they are still in the circulation or whatever point so this is what uh, it is you now see going to our earlier position constant learning unlearn learn and relearn of course practice practice, practice. so this is uh, another area i thought i should share it you're a person with rich wisdom so that's really nice the way you put no no, no nothing here nothing here nothing here whatever comes it it comes from this and with some small interaction i had over the period of time otherwise don't credit me too much okay. but okay. but you you know taken in so much a lot of experience and all of that and you're sharing it with us that shows that yes you have a lot of wisdom you've gained it from different sources but yes you do have a lot of wisdom and you're sharing it with us today sir you're very humble yes sir here talking of experience i read brian tracy brian tracy is another great author he has written the book eat that frog eat that i don't have the book now here eat that frog eat the feed that frog means on a given day i have four five tasks here one of them is hugely important 
but time consuming, difficult. The very fact that it is difficult, that's why it is important, my dear friend. The very fact that it is important because it's difficult. It will be difficult, obviously. He says, eat that frog, do that fast on the morning, yeah, especially in prioritization time, and do that fast. <clears throat> he says, so he says, brilliant Tracy, we all have experience. You said no wisdom, blah, blah, you are telling something. We all have experience. 30 years, 40 years. <clears throat> what do we do with the experience? If I reflect on my experience, then whatever you said, the lessons or whatever you said, wisdom or whatever else. So they got to reflect on that. Otherwise, all of us will get the experience, you know. Say if you are 50 years old, which means what? You have got 50 years of living experience. Yes or no? What do you do with that learning? That experience? That's what matters. Yeah, please. I was just, when you said wisdom, I thought that I shall link uh, Brian Tracy, another famous author. I thought. Yeah. Yes, that's really nice for uh, sharing that beautiful author's name, Brian Tracy, who has written Eat That Frog First. That's really nice. It Brian up... Tracy, T R E S E Y. Brian yes. Tracy, yeah. That's excellent. So, as you, you also focused on like a win win situation, that is also very interesting. And you also focused on like uh, one person, no matter even if it is one person growth every day, that is also beautiful. Yes. So, you take it from me. Yeah. yeah. Even if your growth is slow, don't feel bad or left out. Your time will come. Keep improving your skills every yes. single day. Yeah. Yeah. So, Here, so, I may, may, may just give a small example. Sorry to interrupt. Yes, please. I'll give a small example. Perseverance and persistence. We give a very famous examples. You know CA students, charter accountant students. What is the percentage? For final, the percentage is some 14% or 15%. For inter, it is slightly some... 20, 19% like that. Which means 100 people go, they know pretty well only 20 people will pass. But still those boys and girls don't give up. These boys and girls, don't. they go and bam, 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 prepare, go, learn, prepare, go, learn. Persistence, 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 perseverance, perseverance. I draw huge inspiration from those boys and girls, young boys and girls, CA students. I'm sure this, everybody will resonate. In our extended family or in our one family, there are always CA students nowadays, I hope. You know, extended families. We see them the way you know. They are not worried about failures. People outside may even mock at them, but they are not worried at all. So the, the it's a challenge. It takes a lot of courage to take a challenge when you know pretty well that not all can pass it in the first attempt. See persistence, perseverance. This is a example I give to corporate managers and others. Not to give up. Many often it is a fear of failure. Then the actual failure itself, that is stopping people. Please. Yes, sir. Excellent. So that's really nice that, that you shared all of that. Excellent. Dear sir, I would like to know, like you being a leadership trainer and a coach, what role does attitude play with regard to leadership? Brilliant. Brilliant question. Brilliant question. See, not only for leaders, anybody. If you want to be successful. But let us be clear with what Peter Decker said. It's not enough if I'm successful. Can you be useful? For that, can I tell you a small anecdote in a form of a story? Yes. Can I tell you? Yes. Can tell you? Steve Jobs, we all know. Right? Right? Steve Jobs, Apple, computers, we all know. Yes. It was the early 80s, 1982, 83. Young Steve Jobs. They start up Apple computers. They could somehow discover a kind of computer. That time it was only IBM mainframe, big computers like that. IBM. So Steve Jobs and his friends in Apple, they found out that they could make a smaller one, which we call the personal computer. Not laptop, mind you, personal computer, which is the earlier version of personal computer. They want to commoditize it. Wanted to make it as a commodity. They wanted to take you to every home, like the sugar and salt and groceries, which has already become now today. Is it not? Today, every house has got a computer. If not PC, this mobile is there, which is nothing but a miniature computer. Yes or no? With this mobile, you can even conduct meetings. Yeah? These meetings can be. So, 
he was visualizing that in the early 80s. But they don't have the marketing capacity. They had the technical know-how to challenge IBM. They don't have the marketing capacity. So the board decided they want to bring the best marketing person then prevailing. The task was given to Steve Jobs to find out somebody, a marketing wizard, who can come, take over and produce and market the personal computers. So Steve Jobs was zeroing on one individual called John Scott. These are all real happening, mind you. Real happening. I'm telling as an anecdote, as a kind of a story. But real happening. John Scully, who was the CEO of Pepsi, Pepsi, the big rival of Coca Cola. At one point, John Scully's Pepsi, they could take a bigger share of Coca Cola in the market, two, three quarters. Away. He became a huge celebrity in Wall Street. Everywhere, all the magazines were splashing him. As a marketing wizard, rightly so, John Scully. So Steve Jobs and the team decided they want to bring it to, want him to come to Apple. He was given the responsibility. How and all he has to decide. So he's trying to meet him. Obviously, he is a young boy, Steve Jobs, in his early 20s, 24, whatever age you refer in Google. And the Apple by itself, it's just a very small company, not today. It is the most uh, kind of a big company today in the world. Then I'm talking of some 30, 40 years back. Yes. So Steve Jobs, with all ambition, hope and dream, he's trying to chase John Scully. He could not meet him. On one day, some seminar after seminar in a car parking, when he was about to enter John Scully, he bashed him and said, Mr. John Scully, I'm Steve Jobs. You want to continue to sell sugarated water or you'll come with me and we'll change the world. He asked him. These are all very, very famous, strong words. John Scully goes back to his room. See, you're not going to attract John Scully by way of money. He has enough money by being CEO of Pepsi. And Apple doesn't have that kind of money to even lure him. Am I right? Wow. You can't lure him, allure him by giving him fame. Again, Apple is a very small company. Already this guy is famous. Pepsi and then he made huge inroads into Coca-Cola. Neither money, nor fame, not even popular can lure John Scully to Apple. So Steve Jobs thought of this. You want to continue to sell sugar? What is Polyar after all? He has he was successful, mind you. But what is Polyar? Sugarated water. That's what he said. You want to continue to sell sugarated water in the future, or you'll come with me. We'll change the whole world. This truck. John Scully, he came. And rest is history. As they say, rest is history. Of course, Steve Jobs lost his uh, job. He comes back beyond Macintosh, then iPod, iPhone, iMusic, blah, blah, all those things. Then it's a legend. So, what are we? We are getting two, three points here, mind you. John Scully, its purpose. Why I am doing what I am doing? You can't buy him giving money. You can't buy him giving popularity. But now John Scully is also being spoken of today along with Steve Jobs because they could revolutionize the entire way how a young entrepreneur could do. Steve Jobs was dreaming. Can I give a small computer to young entrepreneurs so that they can rival big companies like IBM? That's what is happening now. In the last 30 years, so many startups coming, then everybody is then doing really, really well. How it is possible? Because Computers were made possible, affordable to every home. That is one thing. Ever. Second, go back to Peter Drucker's words. It's not enough you are successful. Are you useful to the society? That's what John Scully did. That's what Steve Jobs did. He's useful to the society. 
So now are we getting clear how uh, why people are great? Everybody has ambition. Many are successful. But some people become great. There is a book called Good to Great by Jim Collins. He says level five leadership. Level five, we are talking about leadership. No, level five leadership is all about, not about you. There are many people who are successful. But level five leadership is, can you put the society beyond you? That's what Steve Jobs wanted. That's what Martin Luther King Jr. did. That's what Wright brothers did. Wright brothers, with their humble resources, they could invent aviation aeroplane. Whereas, simultaneously, there was another very popular person with a big team, huge resources, government funding, but they couldn't do that. Why? Because that team was working for themselves. They thought that whether we could get the Nobel Prize. But here, Wright brothers, they wanted to change the way people are transporting. Earlier, it was ground transport. Can we make it air? So it's all about society, not about you. Can you continue? That's what again Peter let us say. Be useful. Being successful is good, but be useful. So you were you were asking this question. Meanwhile, I came to Steve Jobs and John Scully, but still it is worth uh, discussing, I believe. Yeah. Excellent, sir. Thank you for sharing all of that and the information we didn't know about John Scully and Steve Jobs that you explained it so well. And as you said, it's not you, it's what you contribute to the society, how you want to impact the society. In that way, you will also, you know, rise above, you know, all difficulties and dangers and people will begin to respect you more. That's really nice. It was really an interesting session, sir. So what I'd like to ask you now is with regard to time, you know, uh, how does one with, in the leadership space, how does one balance the personal and professional space? Like maybe a, you're a leader now and you're very focused on your work, but at the same time, you have a family emergency. So how do you balance that? Or what is the tip or the suggestion that you have for all those leaders who are already leaders, but still they face being human, they face certain personal emergencies. So how do they overcome this? What is the best tip? Again, we can fall back on, safely fall back on seven habits of highly effective people. Habit number three, put first things first. So time management, time management. General Eisenhower, who later became president of the United States, during his army days, wartime days, other things. He expounded this point, urgent and important. He says, things which are urgent, or seldom important. Things which are important are seldom urgent. So what he says is, you have a x-axis, y-axis. Put in x-axis of urgency. Y-axis is important. Then, as an individual or as a leader, whatever, team leader, you should be doing things which are, to begin with, important and urgent. First, as a leader, you should do things which are important and urgent. If you put it in the quadrant, it should be quadrant one, left side, top, top left. I'll give an example. I'm a trainer come coach. Next two days, there's a program. So I need to do my content and everything. Is it important for me to do that? Yes. Huh? Yes. Yes. Is it urgent? Yes. So I do it first today. Do. Okay. Quadrant, top quadrant. Second, there is another program. I need to prepare content. For that, I have 25 days time. Is it important? It is important, but not urgent. I'm coming, I'm coming. Is it important? Yeah, it is important. Is it urgent? It's not urgent. So, I don't postpone it. I put it in the second quadrant. Start doing it on daily basis. 25 days. Daily do 5%, 10%, 5%, 4%, 10%. So that at the end of the day, 2-3 days before, well, I will come to 
So if I do that second quadrant well, probably the first quadrant will not arise at all because I'm doing the important things on a regular basis. Of course, still beyond my imagination, certain things may happen, which is a firefighting which will come in quadrant one. Okay. So quadrant one and quadrant two, as a leader, I am doing important things. Some are urgent. I do it right now. Some are not urgent. I do it on daily basis. But important on daily basis. Then, there is a knock outside. Now, imagine there is a knock outside. Somebody is knocking the door. Door should be open. Yes or no? Is it urgent? Yes. Is it urgent? Yes. Is it important that I should only go and open? No. I can ask my wife or my daughter to open. Huh? Yes. Delegate. Delegate. Things which are not important but urgent, delegate. Quadrant three. Then, now we are talking. Your phone call is coming. I looked at it. This is my friend who normally speaks to me Sundays. Huh? On all day. And the way he asks, you know, ah, see there. He'll say, bully it. How are you? Bully, bully, bully. How are you knowing? Bully it. He's calling me. And he says, ah, come on. What is the news? He'll, he'll ask. Me. Which means he has got enough time in the world. But all this kind of discussion can take place only on Sundays. So what do I do? Immediately I switch it off. Because I'm in a meeting with you, interview. So delete. Important for Not important. Not urgent. Delete. So general Eisenhower gets born to this theory. This is called Eisenhower matrix. Important and urgent. Do, decide, delegate, and delete. Now, whatever is your task on any given day, personal, social, professional, wherever, you fit it in. And do accordingly. Do accordingly. So this is how time management comes. How we can manage your time. Because we all know there are two things which can't be recovered. One is laws of our own, anybody, human life. Cannot be recovered. Second is time. Now it is 8.08 p.m. This 8.08 p.m. today will not come back. 8.08 will come. Tomorrow morning it will come. Tomorrow evening it will come. But today 8.08 will not come. So how well I am going to use my time? This is the excellent tool. Widely followed. I is no matters. I advocate to all my friends. And my participants to do that. This is how we can time management. And prioritization accordingly. As a leader you are always doing the important task. That's what Brian Tracy said. Eat that frog. Or in other management terms, what do you say? Value by your foot. Yes. It gives you 100 value. Your foot, I put 30. What is the ratio? 3.3. So, as a leader, your job is to maximize that ratio. So, you'll be doing things which are high value, high effort. High value, low effort. You will do as a leader. But low value and ask calls for high effort, you won't do. Why do you? I mean, you, you, your team also will not do that. When the, it's all about ROI, my dear friend, return on investment. Uh, you agree now? If there is low value and low effort, okay, tell them, let us do it as a team. I'll delegate it to somebody. But high value task, I'll always be doing as a leader. But the leader, what is the high value task here? Yeah. His job is he's no longer an individual contributor. His job is always to guide, mentor, and support his people. That is the high-value task. He's, he's not an individual contributor. Your job is not to do the job of the people whom you are assigned to. Your job is to help them, guide them to do the job. There are some really, really interesting books. Leading from the back is another excellent book by one Mr. Ravikant and two more people. Leading from the back. Brilliant book. It talks about 
Can you take five minutes on this book? Yes, sir. At yes, three sir. levels, it talks. At three levels, it talks, leading from the back. See, I'm referring more of books. That is enough here. You don't have to know my experience. Learn, know from the experiences of very, very hugely successful people, which is a treasure. Let us learn from them. My job is to only act like a kind of a library. <laughs> I put it that way. I am a static place. I am a library. I have some turn books. Please come, take it and then go. Read and get benefited. I act like that one. Okay. So, leading from the back, can I tell the story? Yes, sir. Please go ahead, sir. It's a parable. Parable is story. Your middle-level manager, say, 20 years of experience, in his mid-40s. He has never faced failure. No project. Always successful. Always successful. He has got a team of eight or nine people. Eight or nine people. But in this present project, he is facing difficulty. It's a four-month duration. Three months are gone. They are not able to progress. Three months means you would expect some 70% progress. Hardly is the 20-30% only. Naturally, the senior management is worried. Senior management is summoning him. Mind you, he is a brilliant guy. Very successful. Good track record. And aspirational. He wants to be this, become the CEO of this company one day. He is the potential. So, naturally, this senior management is worried. Three, four people are there. They are calling him for a meeting. They say, Baba, you've been a good guy. But in this present project, you are not progressing well. We are a bit concerned. He says, yes, sir, madam, there are two, three sirs, two, one or two madams. Yes, sir, madam, I'm also concerned, but you see what happened like that. But they say, okay, we are sure that you can't complete it within the time frame. Cost overrun, budget overrun, everything, time overrun, everything. And our clients will sit on our back. So what we suggest is, we will put you under a mentor in the next locality. Go and meet him. So today is a Friday. You can go and meet him on a Monday. Okay, on Monday he goes and meets the mentor. Mentor says, come on, yeah. Yeah, I was told your boss was told you are coming. And I'll give a small background about this guy now. This guy, very brilliant guy, never faced failure. But the problem now is, he's so much bogged down with his work, almost he ignores the team. So much so, so much of what happens that uh, when a team member comes, sir, I have this doubt. No, no, I told you, no, do it that way. Do it that way. Another person comes, sir, I have, can I do it this way? No, 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 don't do it. No, do it the way I told you. I have been doing it for 20 years. Don't change. See, uh, people are, people want to be seen, heard and respected, the team. But here in this case, what happened? They are not being heard. They are not being respected. They are not being seen. What happened? Then they get withdrawn. They are not putting their best. So what happens naturally? They are not totally committed. So that's why that is. So this is a background I am giving for the all of us. So the mentor says, okay, we have all undergone this problem, including me. My dear friend, the character is Shiva. Shiva, you should know something, Shiva, that what brought you here will not take you there. The kind of skills, knowledge, all those things, you know, we are talking of attitude. We were there. It improves that point. The kind of knowledge, skills, attitude, you all had those things. It brought you so much here. But to go to the next level, you need to add more. I told you, you know, unlearn, learn and relearn. We told, no. So you need to add more skills, more knowledge, upgrade yourself, upskill yourself like that. It happens to all of us, don't worry. He says, I'll put you into three of my disciples. Three days, they'll teach you three things. Good. Tuesday, first teacher, he says, please come, my boss told me. Today, I'll teach you how you should be as an individual. First point, be open-minded. You should always have open mind. Just because you were successful yesterday doesn't mean you will be successful today. Because as you said today, it's a VUCA, VUCA situation. So have open mind, learn newer things from wherever it is. It could be your senior, junior, inexperienced, whatever. Be open mind. Okay. Then detach yourself. You don't have to be at the top always as a leader. No centralization of tasks, all those things. Decisions, no. Detach yourself. Come back. Put your team ahead of you. Let them go, explore, experiment. In that process fail, no problem. 
if they win, if they succeed, give the credit to them. What Dhoni does, the moment he receives the trophy, he gives to the younger boys, no. Because your captain is only as good as the team. And he's also encouraging those boys. So when there is credit, give to your team. When there is problem, you go in front and say, yes, I, we have made a mistake. We will decide. We will, we will do it. Don't worry. Like that. So detach yourself. Third point, assume ownership. All, I told you no leader earlier. I'll replace leader here with CEO. It is not that only the MD is CEO of the company. You are the CEO of your own life. Like that for this project, you are the CEO. You are the CEO. So you are bringing revenue. You are bringing profit. Assume ownership. So these three points. Be open-minded. Detach yourself. And take ownership. First day session over. Second day goes to a new teacher. New teacher says, yeah, yesterday my colleague taught you about how you should be. Today I will tell you how you should approach the team. You should build trust. Point number one, build trust. How can you build trust? Only with relationship. That should be relationship. How about business review says this century is all about relationship. Relationship, relationship. So you have to build relationship. You have to build trust. How it can happen? It cannot happen in vacuum. So there should be transparency. There should be fairness. And of course, you've got to be honest. Integrity, blah, blah, blah. You need to walk that. So build trust. Second point, collaborate. We spoke about synergize. Habit number six. My dear friend, you remember? We yes. are drawing that point here. Collaborate. Collaboration is mean what? I'm an individual. Say, I'm a batsman. I have batted, I'm going, no. You've got to run for your opponent also. I mean, for your colleague also in the non second. And if possible, field well. Suppose you are a bowler. You can't say, I've taken three wickets. You should score some 10 runs. In the team meetings, you should contribute. No, collaborate. How it can happen, collaboration? Only when the members feel, my boss is there to take care of my interests. He's transparent. He has no bias. He walks the talk. He's honest. Only when I have that kind of, that's called, we call psychological safety in the work front. You open LinkedIn, this is what would come, psychological safety. Psychology, this is what psychological safety is all about. The day your team member says, sir, I made a mistake. Psychological safety. He has the guts to say, because his boss will not penalize him. Sir, I need help. I don't know. Psychological safety. Then otherwise people will not accept mistakes. People will not take help. Then it suffers. Productivity suffers. He suffers. Your team suffers. You are also suffering. Okay. So collaboration. Once this is overcome, this environment is given, then collaboration takes place within the team and with you. Collaborate. The first point was build the trust. Second point is collaborate. Third point, leverage the strength. Each individual, they are brilliant people. They are there. But of course, uh, hierarchy level, they are slightly low. Tomorrow, another five years, you, they'll be in your seat. Yes or no? So they have strength. Your job as a leader is to leverage the strength. But again, how it can happen? Only when there is trust. Only when there is collaboration. So these are all the three points of interview. Second day session is over. Third day and last day goes to the third teacher. He says, of course, first day you learned about how you should be. Second day, you learn how you are going to address the team. How are you going to address the task given to you? Again, three points. The three points are stretch the limits. Suppose your team member say you are giving a task. I told you not delegate. You are giving a task. He says, sir, I will take 20 days. Challenge him. Can you do it in 15 days time? <clears throat> Challenge him. How we can do them? He will stretch the limits. He will push the limits. See, constantly people have been stretching the limit. That's what the growth is all about. Invention, discovery, everything. Stretching the limit, stretching the limit. Get my point. So, give them the challenge. But they'll have the confidence again. Because when they stretch the limits, which means they are going to experiment, which may fail. But they have their boss to take care of. Because point number two is taking care of building press, collaboration, blah, blah, blah. No. So, they'll go wholeheartedly. Stretch the limits. But how can you do stretch the limits like this? Say in one in a production unit, 
one hour, 100 units are produced. You want to push the limits. What do you do? In one hour, can you do 120 units? Can you produce? So they will find ways and means how they can speed up. It can be the machinery, it can be the process, or it can be my own approach. For that, creative thinking is needed. Innovation is needed. Peter Drager says, for any company to be successful, two things are needed. Innovation, marketing. Okay. So here you are talking of innovation, creative thinking. What do you say? Out of the box thinking. Lateral thinking. I'll give you an example. We all knew the black uh, landline some 30 years back. Uh, there was a pain point. Uh, people, what they would do once they go outside, I can't communicate. People were working hard. They were pushing their limits, mind you. Then the invention of mobile phone, Nokia 1100. Am I right? Then they said, should it remain just a phone and SMS? Can it be beyond that? Then the birth of the smartphone and Android phones. Today it is everything. What not? This is a computer. You can listen to music. You can conduct programs. You can access mails. So how would this is happening? Number one, they are pushing the limits. Second, creative thinking. Innovation. But again, the problem comes. Suppose I fail. My boss is always there to take care of me. I'm willingly experimenting. My boss is there. See, Chandra in 3 was a success. Chandra in 1 and 2, would you call them as failure? In sick terms, no. They were learning lessons. You get my point? So, similarly, so, out of the box thinking, lateral thinking, creative thinking. That is second point. How we approach class. Third point, extremely crucial. Be hard softly. Be hard on process. Be hard on project timeline. But be uh, soft on people. <laughs> In this present case, what is happening in the senior management? They are hard on project timelines. But they are soft on the individual. They are not penalizing him. They are bringing him out, listening to him. Empathy. I said, no, humility and empathy. What is empathy? Empathy is trying to put myself in your shoes. I don't accept, I don't have to accept whatever you say. No. But I'm trying to understand where you're coming from. So empathy, see? So be hard, softly. Hard on project, timelines, process, implementation. But be soft on individuals. You get my point? So these three. So he learns all the three lessons, goes back to his team members, calling them for a meeting, apologizes. He, he has no ego. He's a growth-oriented person. He has no ego. He apologizes, folding his hands. Sorry, I made a mistake. I did not give you the kind of respect which you all deserve. Can we move ahead? Can you forget? Can you forgive me? Can we forget? Can we move ahead? We have one more month. Still, I believe. If we give up, we are all brilliant people, basically. If we give up, still we can turn around. Team is not satisfied. Not convinced. Sir, you will say like this. We have seen many bosses who goes back. Don't worry. Don't worry. If I go back, you can always have the liberty to call me. We'll have weekly meetings. Four weeks we have. Every Wednesday, 2 p.m. we'll have meeting. You can point out. Sir, suppose I don't want to criticize you in front of public, whatever. You can come to my cabin anytime. Five minutes, ten minutes only. Come. Weekly meetings are there. In between, come to my... See how he's changed. Earlier, he did not have time for his people. See, he's a growth-oriented individual. He has learned. He says, you can. You are always welcome to my cabin. For any five minutes, ten minutes, give me feedback. Then, team is convinced. Mind you, they're all brilliant people. What was missing? The connect was missing. The connect between the leader and the team members was missing. Because the leader, unfortunately, did not have time. So now they are coming back as a team, all for one, one for all, working hard. There are any smart people. So they turn around. They could finish the project within the timeline. Then the team members are happy. Team leader is happy. Senior management is happy. Everybody is happy. Then <clears throat> your new client is coming with a new order. For that, they needed to create a small division. For that, this guy is made as a CEO. See, his dream is also coming to CEO. He takes his entire team with him because they are the one who helped him to grow and succeed with appropriate grade increase, blah, blah, blah. This. So this is what really, really simple, easy book 
easy to read. Easy to read. Lead from the back. Leading from the back by one Ravikant and two more authors. Ravikant was a CEO of uh, Tata Motors and Vice Chairman. So these are all the books which gives us a lot of nuggets, insights, mind. And you are asking about attitude. There are many things which is coming. See, the attitude will change. I told you, you no know, knowledge, skill, attitude. This is a triangle for us to be successful. Knowledge is taught in schools and colleges. Skill is what do we do with that? Applying. And attitude is do I am I in the right mind space to do that? There are many things happening in our life. The one definition of attitude is there are many things happening in my life. It is my kind of thought process through which I relate to the world. That is what his attitude is about. It should always be positive. It should always be high quality. The quality and nature of my thought process through which I relate to the world. It's all about thought. That's what Stephen Covey says. So a thought, reap an action. So an action, reap a habit. So a habit, reap a character. So a character, reap a destiny. So it's all about thoughts, words, and action. So thoughts, then it's all about attitude. They famously say your 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 attitude determines your altitude, how far you can rise. Your attitude determines your altitude. That's what this. So this attitude is all about, my dear friend. Popularly nowadays they say you know attitude cannot be taught. Knowledge and skills, you know, knowledge and skills alone can be taught. I don't believe that way. Attitude alpha can be taught. Attitude can be changed. It's all about thought process. That also can be changed. I have seen many people who have changed their attitude. It's all called about paradigm. It's paradigm. Beyond attitude, paradigm. Paradigm is the way we look at things. We say, we feel, I look at things as they are known. I look at things the way I've been trained to do that. For some 30 years, I was trained not to take brinjal. Paradigm. Then later, something else happened. I had to give up a few vegetables. I needed something to eat. I started eating brinjal. Paradigm shift. How? So it's all about how do we, how we are trained to look at things. That's paradigm. So attitude also can be changed for better. Or for worse also. We are not talking of changing worse. For better. It is possible. But you need to put in that effort. Naturally. Yeah. Brilliant, sir. That was really, really awesome. The way you put that, I just would like to continue listening to all that you are sharing today. You're giving us a lot, lot of information and the vocabulary that you're using is really... Can I take some water? Yes, please. Yes, please, sir. Yes. Dear sir, we now like to get to know about this very important term. Apart from IQ, there's something called as EQ, and that is emotional quotient or emotional intelligence. We'd like you to share your expertise on this, your knowledge in, in this. My views on that. My views. Very on true. That. Very true. Uh, you brought a really, really important point. I told you this emotional intelligence or EQ. This is one of the top five of the skills which are needed in today's context. Along with other four, let us refresh. Creative thinking, collaboration, adaptability, persuasiveness, emotional intelligence. This emotional intelligence, my dear friend, now this is ranked fifth in that survey. They take survey every year. Last year, it was ranking seventh. Now it has climbed two spots to fifth. Don't be surprised. In the coming years, it becomes two or three or one even. I will not be surprised. Emotional intelligence. Because without emotional intelligence, nothing can happen. Your leader needs to have that emotional intelligence. So let us define what is emotional intelligence. Having said that, or emotional quotient, you said along with IQ. IQ is intelligence quotient. You got to be really good in your academics and blah, 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 all those things. And they say if it is 130, 140, but with IQ, the point is beyond age, it's not going to grow beyond further. Whereas EQ, you can continue to grow. So what is EQ then? 
emotional intelligence or emotional quotient. First, it is about me, understanding myself, my weaknesses, my strength. So, self-awareness first. What is my strength? What is my weakness? What makes me angry? What makes me irritated? What makes me happy? Let me know about myself. Self-awareness. Then, self-regulation. We are not telling, you know, control your anger. We don't say that. Regulate it. So, if you are want to be happy, be happy. If you are sad, I mean, due to some reason, be sad. Don't control. I mean, angry, of course, you should control. Otherwise, so self-awareness and self-regulation. And social awareness. We told no interdependent society. So, in our relationship, I should try to understand you. Empathy, social awareness. And my relationship with you, I frame accordingly. Finally, motivation to do these things. So, in natural, this is what is emotional intelligence or EQ. Self-awareness, let me know myself. Self-regulation, social awareness, relationship, and of course, motivation. These are things. IQ and EQ, actually there is no debate which is needed, which is better. No, both are needed. IQ is needed, EQ is needed. What we famously say is, IQ will give you job, but EQ will give you promotion. The more higher up in the ladder you go in an organization, the man with a better EQ gets a job. Assuming the IQs are common, equal. Other things being equal, the person with a better EQ, because basically you are going to handle people. They are only on the people means what? It's not an inanimate object. They are live, living souls. They have emotions. They have tears. They have aspirations. They have dreams. Can you understand that? Then act. So, EQ, the more higher you go, the ladder, EQ is important. Or when you have EQ, then only you can go higher. Otherwise, you will be only an individual contributor. You can be brilliant. That's why it is famously we say, you know, sales, a good sales representative need not be a good manager. Need not be. Not necessarily. Not all. I'm not telling you. This is a famous thing. Why? What is stopping him? Because the problem is you are no longer an individual contributor. I see, you know, we call I see individual contributor as a sales rep, medical rep, whatever. You become a leader now. You need to lead people, which means you're leading their emotions again. You have to address those emotions. So, EQ is going to be hugely important. Be it for creative thinking, you need EQ. I told you, you know, the earlier four who are, what are those? Creative thinking, collaboration, adaptability, persuasiveness. For all the four things, you need EQ, you know. So, the coming months, coming years, EQ will assume greater importance. That is about emotional intelligence. Normally, we take some three, four hours classes. We give some exercises, all those things. But, I mean, I'm just giving some important points in this topics and subtopics. That's, I mean, thanks for bringing up that point. Really, really important. Thank you. Or emotional intelligence, what I only like to call it. Yes. Sir. Thank you so much for explaining that so well with lots of, uh, you know, passion and dedication. You've been sharing so much about all the different topics connected with leadership. And really, as you said, if you want a promotion, it is not your IQ, it is your EQ that will make you get that, right? That's really nice. No, you need the IQ, mind you. I'm not telling EQ is a substitute for IQ. Very true. EQ should supplement the IQ. Very true. You should have the IQ. We are not underestimating the importance of IQ. Yes. Please, sorry, sorry to interrupt. I just wanted to that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, so as sir focused, like IQ and EQ, EQ stands above mm -hmm. IQ. In, on many occasions, and especially if it's a part of your promotion, yes, you need to have a little higher level of uh, EQ as well. Dear sir, we'd like now to know that is there anything else that is connected with the term leadership? Is there some other important aspect that I have not touched upon maybe uh, and focused on? Would you like to please share all of that, sir? Actually, you have brought in many points. I must thank you for that. But one point I'd like to add. Again, it's a story, an anecdote. Yes. Anecdote. 
Henry Ford, we all know, you are dying of automobile industry. Yes. He was trying to recruit managers. So, two young men came. It was an evening. They went to a restaurant to have a dinner. So, he was trying to have interview come dinner with the two young boys. Mind you, both are Harvard trained and same GPA and other things. Henry Ford and these two boys, they ordered dinner. They were talking many things. Then the dinner was over. They came out. <clears throat> Apparently, no business was talked. No discussion on automobile. No discussion on mechanical engineering. Nothing. But the dinner was over. Maybe the interview was also over. They came out. So the first boy he said, boy, yeah. Henry Ford said, boy, boy, nahi. man, my dear friend, you are selected. To the other guy, we, sorry, we can't proceed. This young boy, no, the person who was not selected. He's again a growth-oriented individual. He feels disappointed. He gets the courage. So you're talking to the doyen of the industry. He gets the courage. So thank you for the good uh, dinner. We have discussed many things of life. Of course, you have selected him. Good. Can you please tell me, sir, why you have not selected me? So that, you know, as a feedback, I would like to learn and grow, you know, I'm, I'll tell a young man. Good, you're asking me. I'll tell a young man. <clears throat> we were having dinner. We ordered a few things. The waiter came. He gave us the steak and blah, blah, blah. Without tasting the steak, you applied pepper and salt. <clears throat> Whereas the other guy, he tasted it, then whatever is needed, if it required pepper, he added pepper. If it required salt, he added salt. I see the difference. In my company, it's a growing company. I want young managers like you to come and contribute and change. Because change is the only constant. And we also spoke about adaptability. But in your case, what happened? You did not even taste how it is. With the preconceived notion, you started putting pepper and salt. Whereas that guy tasted it, then whatever is needed, he made those changes. Changes are needed, mind. In my company, changes are needed, but I want a manager who will come, assess the situation, then make the necessary changes. In your case, you did not do that. You blindly applied the change, which is not we expect. Assess the situation, then give the effect to the world. That is the reason why I took it. Second point, whenever the waiter came, this boy, he said, can you please give me water? Can you please bring me that? Like that. And whenever he gave something, he said, thank you. Whereas in your case, <clears throat> whatever he brought, whatever he Obliged, what you did. You did not even recognize his presence. You were all respecting me because I am going to be your future boss. You were recognizing the hierarchy, but you were not recognizing the human there, that individual, because he was below you. Whereas this guy, he was recognizing him as an individual, human. Not only he was respecting the human, he had the human qualities to respect people, courtesy. These are all the two reasons. We spoke about humility, empathy, blah, 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 all these things. So these are all the two reasons why I selected him and I could not. So this boy learned some good lessons. So from this, it's a lesson for all of us. You, by all means, kindly. Please continue to respect hierarchy. Nothing wrong, but respect humans, irrespective of their place in the society. And before applying change, don't come with a preconceived notion. Change is a constant. No question about it. But assess the situation, then apply the changes, necessary changes. Anyway, there will be lessons. That is another matter. But if you have assessed it, you are in a better 
position to face those resistance also. If you are not made, suppose you are wrong, what happens here? See, so these are all the things we learn from this. This is a good anecdote I liked. I thought I shall share it in this program. Really, sir, it's so, so nice and kind of you to share this beautiful, uh, you know, anecdote with us and much more you've shared earlier. That's really also uh, well put in. I just am short of words to praise you. Thank you so much for the time and the energy and the passion that you've had in sharing all of this. And we've had really a learning journey right from the start to this very end moment. Uh, looking forward to many more interactions with you. You're a hidden gem. And I'm, and I'm happy today that you are on the International Fab Talks. And I hope that people really share this beautiful video with people who really need to know about it, especially the ones connected with a very professional zone, like being you want to be the leader, you want to be the manager. And there are lots of aspects where you could pick up from here to be the best leader. And what, what's all in the book and people don't have time to read books now. They just want it quick like that. So this video serves that purpose. This session serves that purpose. I feel uh, that you've really done justice to the word leadership and to that great quality within us, having the EQ and treating each other with you, uh, humility, to be humble. And the last one, and that was, you know, the fire, the cherry on the, you know, uh, the top. Yeah. That was really nice. Excellent, sir. So once again, I thank you for giving me this opportunity. Through you, I'm able to reach to larger audience. Let me be very clear. I'm not even humble when I say that I was not sharing my experience, which is limited. I'm only sharing whatever little things I learned. And of course, some people whom I've talked with, but I found it to be useful. Yeah. And as you said, Simon Sinek started why. What is my why is? Same his why one. Can I inspire people so that they can do what inspires them most? This is my word. Can I inspire people so that they can do what inspires them most? So with this, I thank you for giving me this good opportunity where it could, there could be a knowledge share. Thank you, my dear friend. Good day. Bye. Nice, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. You have given us many takeaways, lots of important messages and tips. You know, it focused with reality. It's not just only from the books. You have even given us many situations which was focused on anecdotes, your personal experiences, as well as the books that you've shared with the anecdotes that you've collected all through these years. Looking forward to many more interactions. I wouldn't want to let you go, but yes, I respect your time. Thank you very much. And it was really a pleasure having you here, sir. Thank you. Yes, my Thank pleasure you. as well. Thank you. Bye and good day. Bye. Yes, Thank, you. Thank you. My dear friends, uh, we've had a wonderful session with this beautiful celebrity of ours is Mr. Sridhar. And he's been enlightening us and empowering us as to how we should change our mindset and always focus on growth, a win-win situation. No matter if the uh, growth is one percent per day, let it be. You try to go forward and focus on being the best version of yourself and make others also around you to be the best. So it's a win-win for all of us. If you love this video, please do share it with others. And if you like what we are doing, stay connected with us, like, subscribe, and share, friends. Have a lovely time. God bless. Thank you. Sir. Thank you.